popularity of TV westerns during the 1950s is undeniable. In the 1958 season, seven of the top ten TV series were westerns. It was great escapist entertainment about good guys, bad guys, and smart horses. The hero often carried a custom-built gun and had a sidekick for comic relief. We loved the look and feel of TV westerns. We also loved its morality, adventure, and beautiful unspoiled landscapes. In many ways, the TV western is one of TV's greatest accomplishments. in my life. Please, God, I don't want to lose her. I can. He's a good doctor, Johan. You said you've heard me out. Are those your men out there? I didn't mean that. I that. might have known. Johan, you cover me. Please. You folks stand back. I can't see anything. Just fire toward the wagon when I go. You ready? All right. Get on your feet. Come on, get up. Why, Miss Regina, what are you doing here? Never mind, Dan. Just clear out of here. You go as far and as fast as you can, and don't you ever come back. But you said... Well, Miss Regina, he was just carrying out your orders, wasn't he? That's right. It was her idea. Believe me, I'm sorry. But you were helping my wife and then do a thing like that? Why? I don't understand. I, I said I was sorry. I, I never intended for Gant to go through with it. Well, if it was a bluff, it was a dangerous one. I almost got caught in your own trap. I said I was sorry. What do you want me to do? Get on my knees and beg you to forgive me? I'm not asking for forgiveness. I don't deserve it. 
<laughs> you can stay on the land, Mr. Godshock. I'll give you a title to it if you'll stay. You mean the land? I don't know what to say. Mr. Godshock, Jim. You got your orders. Get going. Your wife's over the west, Mr. Goshawk. I think she's going to be all right. Catherine. I am ashamed, Doctor. I, I have no money to pay you right now, but I like to say what I say to Miss Regina and Mr. Bowie. Thank you very much. God bless you. Now, Johan, just do me one favor. Anything you say, Mr. Bowie? Call him Jim. He knows you're in on the deal, Bolton. So what? He got the drop on me at Homer's old shack and said he was coming in to get you. Did he see you two boys head for town? No. Good. Then we'll ambush him, same as you did the sheriff out in the hills. Here in the street? Certainly. Get rid of your horses and take cover. Shoot him on sight. Well, he's a wanted man, so we'll be in clear with the marshal. I saw you, I had the sheriff's gun. This time I've got his badge. You're under arrest. Come on. got any doubts about it, you're still under arrest. Here's the man you're after, Marshal. I just found that out. Sounds like you've seen the sheriff. I did, and I had a long talk with him. The next time you make an arrest, Curly, you'd better wear your star. I got a mess of prisoners for you, four of a kind. What do you want to do with them? We're going to turn them over to Walt. And this time, I don't think he'll let them go. You bet I won't. Get going. <laughs> I think this calls for a bit of refreshments. A double slug. Double slug.
make that a lemon soda. Hey, that young Curly is pretty fair shot, wasn't he, huh? Yeah. You know, he kind of reminds me of an old uncle of mine. Bullseye Hayes, he was an old ass. He was one of the greatest shots in the whole United States and Texas. Of course, all the Hayes was good shots, but this fella was extra good. Well, of course, he had to be. See, that's all he done for a living, just travel around the country giving shooting exhibitions. You know, throwing things up in the air and then shoot. He used a shotgun a lot when he done that. Well, one time they was having a contest out in California. Come my uncle's turn to shoot, and the feller threw up 15 or 20 plates, and he banged away at them like that. And just then a big windstorm come up and blowed them bullets off to one side, and they went crashing right through a great big orange grove. Well, sir, they went right on through. But right there in that orange grove, that ground was soaked up with the first orange juice the world has ever known. Yes, sir. I always wondered where it come from. Take me home, take me home to the land of the pig. Here's Jack, Uncle Roy, with those two men. The lamp stop Sanford from warning him. He'll have to go through that canyon. You go over that way, Letty. I'll meet you down here. Time to lose. Now you wait here. I'll be right back. All right, the judge said to tie you up. Get on the ground and put your face down. I could kill you myself. I've no use for a man who shoots another man in the back. I'll handle this. The judge. Get the dippy. I'm going to be sorry. <laughs> Go. 
cover, lady. Joe Sanford left this note in a big book for somebody. It's mine. I don't know if it is or not. About them horses you switched on Jeff. Guess you was afraid Ted would find out what you was doing. What were you doing? Nothing. Nothing. The judge is making it all up. Whose gun is it? Why, it's Drake's. I was hoping he'd come for it. I found it across the street from where Ted Sloan was killed. I left it there figuring whoever used it would come back to get rid of the evidence. He's crazy. He even examined my gun that day. Men have been known to carry two. One gun looks just the same as another. Not when it's got a chipped handle. I'd know that gun anywhere. You'll pay for this killing, and you'll pay for it right now. Hold it, Mister. He killed my best friend. Man can't take the law in his own hands. You know that, Bert. You're under arrest, both of you. For what? For attempted assault with intent to kill. All right, now let's get back to Langtree. All right, let's go. Bring a hundred bucks for a night's work. How about it? Okay, I'll see you outside. Oh, Mike. When the doc is finished with Red, will you see that he stays? I don't want him to leave. Sure, Miss Fancy. I'm Marshal Dunham. I just got back to town and heard about it. Will he live? He has a chance. I'll know better in a few hours. Where's Fancy? He's out bringing in a herd of diseased cattle. What's that? I'll explain on the way. Doc, Fancy says you're to stay put. Well, in that case, we'll... <laughs> A fighter will lose everything. I'll ride ahead and tell the buyer we're bringing them in. some time in all that confusion to convince the rest of Redmond's cowboys we weren't rustlers. They were decent men, and when they got the point, the battle was over. That is, for everybody except Fancy Varden, who was streaking for town. 
Time. I'll be the judge of that. Go ahead, son. Keep coming, champ. Good, Silva. Well, I'll be Dagnab. It looks like he's coming to the boy. I said get the rope. It's too late now, just like it's always too late with us. Now you have the chance. Don't shoot him, Sheriff. Sorry, son. There's no other way out. Go on, Sheriff. Shoot. I don't want him to suffer. I want to be sure of my shot. Sandy, Ricky. Well, you'll have to answer to him for what you've done. With it. County clerk. Sheriff arrest those two men. They brought in gold or identical to grub stake. That's right, Sheriff. They must have jumped his claim right after they murdered him. Come back here. Stop or I'll shoot.
Thank goodness I found you three before the sheriff did. What's happened, Marge? Well, I've lost both of my cattle to rustlers, and the sheriff thinks you three stole them. Can you imagine that? Who told that big lie? I break his neck in two places. Well, it was one of my new punchers. I was in town when he rode in and told the sheriff. Hey, Bill, you know this country around here pretty well? Sure, why? What would you do if you rustled cattle? Where would you drive them? Well, I'd take them over the state line, through Devil's Pass. Well, then there's where we're heading for. Miss Lacey, will you do something for me? Certainly. Please tell the sheriff to pick up Foster and hold him at his office until I get there. All right. Thank you. and the new Lacey Rider. After them, Pancho. I'll meet you in town. Sheriff, this is an outrage. You have no right, legal or otherwise, to detain me here. I insist upon. Hold off, Sam. I'm not detaining you. Just keeping your company until Cisco gets here. Did you find my herd, Cisco? Yes, and the wrestlers, too. You know who they were? Your foreman, Jason. And the new hands your lawyer hired. Are you insinuating that I'm behind the rustling? No one else. You can't prove it. No? <laughs> A smart attorney like you should be more clever where you hide things. Sheriff, I found this bottle of ink eradicator in one of his files. This, my friend, is going to send you to the gallows. Really? I am positive. And Sheriff, take a look at this. This is a copy of Jim Lacey's will. Foster removed the name of the real executor, the banker, and substituted his own. The cattle rustling was only the first step in looting the ranch and stripping Miss Lacey of her inheritance. This is a very clever deduction, Cisco, but I'm afraid it will never be admitted as evidence. Congratulations, Mrs. Ryan. Oh, you know already, Mr. Barton. Yes, Cisco and Poncho told me about your getting married. But you understand, under the terms of your uncle's will, it's my duty as his rightful executor to cut off your allowance. I know. But being married to Bill is worth it. Well, I called you in for another reason. Bill, have you a dollar? Sure, why? Well, give it to me. Why should I give you a dollar? Hey, do as you say. Give him the dollar. What's all this about? You see, Bill? The will provides that if Margie married you, then the executor could dispose of the property at his discretion. And after a full discussion of the matter with our mutual friend, Cisco, it's my discretion to sell you the entire estate for exactly one dollar. Oh, Cisco! Take good care of her, Bill. Oh, tamale. Let's win. Oh, Pancho. <laughs> Just hold it right there, Mr. Willis. What's all this about? That's what we want to know. Well, I saw Lily riding like the devil was after her. I thought I'd find out why. Well, easy does it, Marshal. It's Billy and Jock we're after. Did you get your proofs laid? All we need. Good. Then the money I owe you has been well earned. The money you owe? You mean you... That's right, he hired me. 
I sent him your picture and a letter telling him the situation. Asked him to come by here and clear my name. Now look, Marshal, if Billy and Jock are as smart as I think they are, they'll probably try to make a run for it. Our best bet's the old Frederick place. Why there? I'll tell you later. Come on, let's go. Another hour and nobody will be able to tell these horses have been in here. You think they'll come up on that old corral? Not until after we finished up in here, they won't. After that, it'll be too late. We'll be on our way to Texas with the Cody horses. All right, Billy, give him a hand. Look, you wait in front. Try to get up as close as you can without being seen in case one of them tries to run for it. I'll try to get in through the roof. Here, hold my horse. it now? You know, I knew they were here? Yeah. Well, I checked the bank. They told me that Jock had received and cast a check for $2,000 one week before Lily lost her first horse. And that told you where the horses were? Well, not quite. You see, in a poker game the other night, Jock didn't have enough money to cover his losses. So that made me think that he... Uh, that he must have spent the money. That's right. That's right, but where? Well, I saw you going into the railroad depot. Well, they just told me that no horses have been shipped out recently. Well, that meant that they must be around here somewhere. That's right, Marshal, but where? The land office. Now you're getting warmer. They told me that Jock had leased a piece of ground the same day that uh, the check was cashed. The Frederick's place. Marshal, I don't know how you do it. Oh, well, it takes years. <laughs> you see, Potter gave me a pretty good description of this. It pretty much fit the doctor's report on both Sam and Henry's wounds. <laughs> Everybody thought it was caused by a killer horse. Well, that just about winds up my job here. Got to be heading up north. Oh, Slade, you don't have to leave so soon, do you? Don't I? What do you say about that, Vance? Well, uh, <laughs> that's just what I thought. <laughs>
It happened so fast, Rogers, I thought the roof fell on me. I'm glad you got away, but I have a plan to bring him in. I'm sorry, Roy, but I... Forget it, Randall. When will the sheriff be back? He's doing about noon tomorrow. Well, if you see him before I do, tell him I'm bringing his brother in, and he'll enforce the law no matter who gets hurt. Come on, Scotty. Are you all willing to go along with the plan? You can count me in, Roy. Nellie Bell and me will be raring to go. I'd give every ounce of dust I ever dug to put that thieving coyote underground. I understand how you feel, Scotty. But we'll just let the law take care of Blodgett and his boys. Well, what do you say we turn in? You've had a pretty rough day. That I have, lad. <laughs> Evening, Randall. You got a lot of gall coming in here. Oh, now take it easy, Randall. I came to give myself up. I'll stand to deal with my partners. Here's my gun. Sorry to do this to you again, Randall. You and I just happen to be on opposite sides of the law right now. Get over there. Nice goal, Hank. Yeah, we thought you'd never make it. Get in there. Tie him up and jack. Boys, just hate to do this to you again, Randall. You can understand our position. Okay, let's go. You got here at the right time, Hank. Taking the old man to the railhead this morning with his gold. Well, that's swell. Look at him going away party. It takes Nellie Bell a little while to warm up, but then afterwards she just purrs like a kitten. Yeah, like a wildcat, you mean. That right, you just take it easy. I'll be riding the ridge above you. When Blodgett shows himself, we'll wrap him up and introduce him to the sheriff. Where'd you get it, fella? You've got something on your mind. Let's see what it is. How long ago did they get away? About four o'clock this morning. Blodgy came in and caught me off guard. I heard them tell Blodgy was taking Scott into the railhead this morning. That means they'll be waiting. You better come with me. I'll need your help. Well, there's the jeep. Evidently, Blodgett and company didn't attack it. I'm sure glad we caught him before he showed up. Well, look, you stay here. Just out of town. If there's a scratch on just one of them, I'm gonna part your hair with a 45. 
Get going. Get out. Senorita, would you mind stepping up, please? Take a look at these. Where would you say Mr. Rockcliffe learned the Spanish language? In Spain. He writes in print like a Spaniard. And your brothers print like Californians. Mr. Rockcliffe, you printed this warning letter to Captain Drake yourself. That's ridiculous. The, the print's entirely different. How would you know unless you made it different? And not only that, you printed that note after Captain Drake was murdered. How are you so sure of the exact time of death? Because you pulled out your watch and made a point of telling me, not once, but twice, that it was 2 to 2. I looked out the window, and I'm no plainsman if I couldn't tell it was 2.30. You were setting up an alibi. Oh, uh, that's circumstantial evidence. Now, have you anything else, Mr. Plainsman? Yes. That Spanish land grant you have. I want to see it again. Well, all right. Drop the gun. Stand right there, everybody. Now we can be friends again. The guilty man has been caught. How can we ever thank you, Kid Carson? I still can't prove it. Watch him for me. Quien es? It's Kid Carson, ma'am. Come in, amigo mio. What is your news? You have obtained a confession? Uh, not yet. I ran into a bit of trouble and I need your help. Of course. Anything that I can do. I'd like you to clear up a couple of points. And the first? Why did you ask me to protect your husband after your husband had been already dead? I, I did not know that. You should have. Your lawyer knew. As a matter of fact, he wrote that warning note you showed me. Perhaps I have been taking advice from the wrong man. Yes. And another thing, he said that this important document has not left his hands since the case began. That is true. Mr. Rockcliffe has had all the papers on the case. Uh-uh. The one that had this one was stabbed by a sharp instrument. Your lawyer, who claims that this important document has not left his person, is Halen Hardy. But your husband, who normally would carry an important paper like this, is dead. Does that suggest anything to you? Why, I, I hardly know what to think. I do. I think that this document is a forgery, cooked up by you and your lawyer in Spain. Your husband, a very honorable man, caught on at the last moment that, that your case was not legitimate. What of it? My case will still be won, as long as the California courts are obliged to accept the royal crest of Spain on any document. Look at it closely, my friend. Yes, King of Spain. That is what matters in court, and my stupid husband could not see it that way. But you are very clever. Clever enough to share any 50 square miles of that rich Ventura Valley land, and more. What more? You mean you have more land grants that you intend suing on? You know what I mean. Judd Rockcliffe is only a brain. But you, you are a man. Thank you very much. And you are the most beautiful and the most selfish and contemptible murderess that will ever be hung by the state of California. On what evidence? You have no witness to my very dull conversation with a stupid young man. Oh, I don't need a witness. The lower courts might honor this forgery, but uh, when I report to the governor, he won't. But you are not going to report anything. The blades of Toledo that were famous long ago and sometimes used for more than sewing by the women of old Spain. But my husband was, was killed with a knife as the doctor will testify. No, he was killed by these shears. Your lawyer switched them with El Toro's knife. That stupid fool. 
That stupid fool is my partner. A man who would give his life for me. You were stupid, Bella, when you allowed your attorney to try to pin the murder on El Toro. A man who was sent down here with me by the governor. Let's go. Senor Del Toro, now that we have won our lawsuit, we are checking out of your hotel. I regret the little game I play with you, but I am happy to settle our account with cash. Uh, gracias. Adios, muchachos. Adios, Carlota. Con recuerdos. Here I have seen and met the most wonderful man in the world. Oh, a magnificent compliment, querida. No less than Kit Carson deserves. Let's ride, Toro. Adios, amigos. Adios. Church? Would you care to accompany me? I wish I could, Sally. Especially today. I'm on duty. Next Sunday, then. I'd sure like to, but it, it's just that... No excuses, please. I'll expect you here next Sunday. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late as it is. getting so sleepy I can hardly keep my eyes open. Well, now I'll get some sleep. Why, Jingles, you mean you're not going to church? Church? By golly, it is Sunday. Well, Bill and I got a year-round reserved pew over there. I guess we might as well use it. Don't fall asleep during the sermon. Don't you worry. The Reverend Billings preaches both loud and clear. Come on, kid. Let's get started. Let's at least give him time to get out of earshot. Now, kid, now's the time. Well, don't unlock it, boy. I ain't coming out. Pay no attention to him, kid. Let's go. You know you're wrong, son. You can't do wrong. It ain't in you. Kid, open the door. I... I guess you're right, huh? I've been fighting this all night. A little while ago, when I met Sally, I thought how nice... He's a good boy. 
Not his fault. A good boy. Believe me. Happy Jingles. In the office. You all right, son? You hurt, man? I just got slugged on the head. died the way he did, to give me a chance. I'd kind of like to spend the rest of my days doing some good. Make up for all the wrong he did. I want to believe you, Drew, and I'm going to give you that chance. You'll stay in town on probation for at least a year. And you'll continue as you've been doing, learning from Jingles and me. I've never heard of him. Look, pal, you're going to get 20 years anyway for aiding a killer. That's right. Unless you want to do some talking. What'd you come here for? To burn those clothes? Or to get rid of that white stallion. 20 years is an awful long time. Who is he? All right. All right, I work for him, but I've never seen him. <laughs> That's a laugh. Honest, so help me. He sent me my orders by mail, and he pays me the same way. Here, take a look at this if you don't believe me. What are your next instructions? I'm to meet him at Harding's Furniture Store this afternoon while you're on the show platform. All right, Mr. Marzi. You'll meet him. Only I'll be there to meet him right along with you. What about that spongy object he asked you to steal? Did it tell you where it was? No. Never mind. I think I know what it is anyhow. Hurry, 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 right this way, right this way. Get around, you're all welcome. Welcome to the biggest little show on earth. When he comes inside, I'll jump through. And my good friend, let me advise you. The first shooting has not been confined to the show platform. She has defended herself in the wilds against the most ferocious animals. Oh, Tag, instead of going out there with me today, I want you to watch the audience. Keep your eyes open. Right? Right. Mr. Sills, do you think you could take Tag's place today? I'd be pleased to. But why? Well, I didn't want to tell you this, but I'm almost sure that your brother Jimmy is the Welshman. What? Where's he at? Right here in town. But Annie, you ain't going out there. You can't. I've got to. I give you that amazing artist and greatest exponent of marksmanship of all time, 
the one and only Annie Oakley. Give me a light, Jill. I don't get it. You've never been late before. That's right, soon. Looks like our little girl Annie was right again. Hey, what are you doing that for? You stay here just in case Welty does show up. And now, dear friends, don't make any noise. Don't move an eyelash and pray. May there be no disconcerting racket. He didn't show up. That's all we need to know. about it now than when it was you they was holding. There ain't never reason enough for killing a good man. Simon thinks different. 
So come on, let's go, deputy. Now, Alvy don't like to be kept waiting. Boy, ain't nothing Alvy won't do. <laughs> oh, oh, but I guess you know about that, huh? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that coyote don't deserve to live, but it ain't worth Simon's well, dying. Stop talking! How much time they give you? Deadline's one minute after... After two? Saddle with a stinking job anyhow. Let's go. We're gonna sneak back here and we're gonna take you when, when we don't have to give you back. No, sorry. You better pray Alvy didn't see that. You know what I got in store for you, huh? I, I'm gonna come back and drill one in your good eye. <laughs> Call your brother. Well, there ain't no hurry. <laughs> Call him. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I've been hanging it since I got off. <laughs> Mark! Nah. Nah, he's waiting. He's waiting here for me personally. Hey, Alvy! Hey, Alvy! Uh, Alvy, it's me, Jimmy! You bring the law man down, let's go, huh? some grub. I wonder if that is, Madden. Because if it ain't, you better start saying your prayers, Patrick. You just got a couple minutes left. You haven't got much time left either. Someday they'll catch up with you polecats. Polecats, huh? I'll show you who the polecats are. Not here. Rocky, take care of the Patrick kid. Sure thing, Jake. Wish you'd have plugged him long ago. Looks like we'll have to go after Madden ourselves. Are you with us, stranger? Sure. I'd like nothing better than going after Pete Madden. Mind if I look at my horse first? No, go ahead. Hey, boss! Yeah? Somebody plugged Sam and got the boy away.
What's that? If Sam go well, that may be your son, Jim. Take gun now. Go after Madden Gang. Your horse is fresh. There's tired. Jim, I was afraid I'd never see you alive again. You wouldn't have, Dad. If it hadn't been for the masked man and Fred Vance. The Range Rider, with his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors. Put him up. Afraid to judge. Fancy meeting you here. Let's get inside. Wait. I'll sign. I'll sign anything. Including your own death sentence, Mr. Carver? Why, it's me. Judge Moore, at your service, ma'am. You, the chair for Miss Carver. And you open a window. It's stuffy in this place. Well, Porteous, you propose to leave us in the desert? Or eliminate us like you did your last victim by dropping us down a mine shaft? Ah, you'll find out. You'll find out soon enough. And how many will that make? Five? Six? Eight, Carlton. Shut up. Didn't know you'd gone in for wholesale murder as well as claim jumping. What did you expect me to do? Sit around while everybody except me was making a strike? Go hungry while any fool with a shovel could dig up a fortune? It's always a failure who can't stand another man's success. Failure? I'm a failure? <laughs> That's a laugh. Me with five gold mines, not including carvers. I do believe you're mad, sir. Quite mad. Get me, man! Get Hold it, Judge. Take Carver and the girl out to the wagon and bring around the horses. I'll be out as soon as I'm finished having the a little talk with the judge. Well? Papa's been ill. I can help him if I want to. I'm all right, Ann. Women, you tell him what to do and right off to start arguing. Yeah, that's why I ain't never got married. Be 
reach. The main drive. like this to express one's gratitude. Oh, I just forget it. That's going to be hard to do. Well, Mr. Range Rider, you forgot your gun. Keep it as a souvenir, Judge. Sir, this is indeed an honor. Remember now, don't grab it too high. Reach. be doggone. <laughs> Good luck. Death Valley Day. Your Honor. If you want to save that subsidy and your town, you'll do what I tell you. Are you giving me orders? Well, yes, sir, I am. And it's not going to cost you a thing. I want you to call a meeting of the town council down at the saloon right away. Those men are way out at the tracks. Well, please drive out and get them. I'd like to know what you want, Breckenridge. Well, I want you to get that council meeting called to order before midnight. I'll save your railroad for you. I'm trying to help him. We've got nothing to lose, Papa. That's right. Bring my hat and coat. I'll harness up the buckboard. Fifty-two. What do you suppose is holding him up? There they are now. Is everyone here? Everyone. I want all the members of the Austin Common Council to come to order. <laughs> As mayor of the city of Austin, I now declare that an extraordinary meeting of the Austin Common Council is in legal session. I protest this farce. This is highly Just illegal. take it easy, will I you, will you not take Roy, it. will you I'm keep in company? Go ahead, Your Honor. This session has been called in order to hear a suggestion from Dr. Breckenridge. Go ahead, Doctor. It's only a few minutes before midnight, so I'll make it a short speech. And now everyone knows that a town with a railroad is a town that grows. New industry, new wealth, new citizens. Now, Austin is only a mile and a half from having that railroad. 
It's within the power of the Common Council to extend the western city limits a mile and a half. Now, see here. Make room for the new industry, the new citizens, and the new wealth. Now, if the motion to extend the city limits out beyond the tracks is passed before midnight, all the obstacles between the city and the granting of the subsidy will be removed. This is a subterfuge. It's illegal. Don't listen to this faker. It's absolutely legal, and you know it. Give them your opinion on that, Mr. Attorney General. Well, it's certainly an unusual procedure. But legal? Well, I, I wouldn't care to give an opinion on that phase of it till I'd studied the situation for precedence and... Uh... Tell them it's illegal, a travesty. Mr. Smith, I've got a gun right under this hat. Now, you know that motion is perfectly legal. You're just stalling for midnight. Now, I want you to tell the people that the motion is legal. Or I'll have to use this gun. In my opinion, the, this meeting of the council is legal. It is their right to extend the limits of Austin at their discretion. Yeah! that the legal city limits of Austin be extended a mile and a half in a westerly direction to a point just beyond the existing railroad tracks. All in favor, vote aye. aye. Opposed? Carried. <laughs> Take care of you later. Oh, oh. oh my. my, my. I don't know when I've seen you at such a loss for words. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you're doing it. Get me untied, quick. Oh, sure, sure. Now, remember, I'm your friend. Oh, yeah, sure. No hard feelings. Oh, no. And no charges against me? No. Promise? Yeah, I promise. <laughs> Are you sure? Cross my heart and hope you die if you don't get my hands untied. Oh, oh, that's different. <laughs> Come on, out the side door. Right here, Mr. Gallagher. I don't know what kind of a game you're playing, Crystal, but I got the feeling that you don't know much about this job of being a mayor. I don't know what you mean, Mr. Calhoun. I don't get your move. Well, I think it's about time you resigned, don't you? About time you settled down and became a woman. I'm not resigning for anyone. I intend to institute a new election. Well, I don't understand this. You've been backing me all along, Calhoun. Why the sudden change? I can give you the answer to that one, ma'am. Your friend Calhoun here backed up your reform campaign so he could buy up the gambling houses at a cheap price. Make it a pigeon out of you, Mayor. Yeah, now he wants to bring gambling back to Nugget City. Is this true? Simply a matter of good business, my dear. There isn't anything anybody can do about it. I think there's something I can do about it. What can you do? As I told Miss Colby, we're federal agents. Well, that doesn't give you any jurisdiction in this case. That's where you're wrong. The event of emergencies in territorial areas, we have the right to pick civil authority for the duration of that emergency. 
This is no emergency. Miss Colby seems to think it is. I certainly do. So I hereby appoint you mayor and just of the peace of Nugget City. Oh, I think that's wonderful. And I promise you I'll keep gambling out of this town. You'll never make it stick, I can promise you that. I think we will. We'll draw up the necessary papers before we leave town tomorrow. Yeah, you'd be lucky if you're able to leave town at all. And if you think I'm just talking, take a look down there. Those are my men riding into town under my orders, including some of the toughest gunfighters north of the Rio Grande. I'm running this town. All right, drop it. Gather, I'll kill her if you don't leave town. It's either you or her. <laughs> Not so good, Captain. Marlin's even got Frank Slater riled up. Well, it shows you what bad talk can do. Frank was willing to let things go as they were. Maybe by the time Travis gets back, the temperature will go down. Let's hope so anyway. I don't think Travis will show his face around here anymore. I don't know why we're standing here wasting time. Let's go out and track him down. I don't think Rinding sent him on any assignment. Now, just a minute. Earl was my brother and his killer should be hanged. But I'm not so sure we should resort to mob violence. Well, I'm all for it. I am too. John, you and Frank look out here. Travis is coming down the street as big as all get out. Yeah. That's Chad Williams with him. I wouldn't put anything past him. I sure wouldn't. Well, who's that other fellow? That's Holland Brick. I met him a few times down in Tucson. He's a hired killer. Well, that puts a different light on things. Say, maybe we were wrong about Clint. Well, there's only one way to find out. We'll make the prisoners talk. The vigilantes have work to do. Let's go, men. What have they been arrested for, Travis? Breck ambushed me and tried to kill me. I caught Williams banding one of Cobb's calves. You wouldn't take my advice, would you, Breck? You had to get into trouble. Get him inside. Into the bunk room. 
Wait here, Corporal. Handcuff him to the bunk. All right, sit down, Brack. Breck told me Sorrel Slater shoot Charlie Hall. Is that true, Breck? Or did you do it? Now, you're not pinning murder on me. Keep your trap closed. The boss will have us out of here in nothing flat. Well, I don't trust anybody. That's very interesting, Williams. Who is your boss? From the sound of that mob, you may talk whether you want to or not. The mob can be very nasty when it gets out of hand. We're here to question the prisoners. I'm afraid I'll have to say no, Mr. Marlin. They'll be questioned, but at the proper time and by the proper authorities. We're tired of waiting. We want the answers now. Yeah, we want them. Quiet. We want them. Quiet. Now, all of you go outside. Some of you men are my friends, and I don't want to shoot you. Better do what the captain says, men. Williams is dead. Unfasten him. It's no use. Who did it, Breck? Frank Slater. But you said you didn't know him. <laughs> I never tell everything I know. What's wrong, Captain? We heard some shots. You certainly did, Slater. You fired them. Why, that's ridiculous. Breck was alive when we... To be hung. If he deserves it, he'll be hung. In due process, by the law. All right, Travis. Buffalo Bill Jr. with his little sister, Calamity. Well, here we are. Four pieces of paper. Put them together and you got yourself a quarter million dollars in cash. Mr. Jesse James' private little nest egg. With those three pieces, I had everything I needed except the name and the place. I figured it was some kind of a lake or something, but I didn't know the name or where. Now for your piece, Mr. Kent. Save yourself the trouble, Max. The name is Potter's Lake, and it's right out there. <laughs> uh, poor Guilford, sitting practically right on it and didn't know it. <laughs> Take him outside down to the lake. We got us some digging to do. <laughs> someplace.
out. Judge, if you don't mind, I'd like to see my treasure. Well, Mr. Kent, you claim to be the rightful owner of this chest and what's in it? That's right, sir. Then I'm pleased to inform you you're no longer in custody as a material witness. Bill, arrest this man. Well, what's the charge? The charge is armed robbery. This is the evidence, and you just identified it as belonging to you. Well, I'll... Yes, I'm afraid you will, Mr. Kent, for a long time. Well, we might as well see what you're going to jail for. Corey. Shoot the lock off of that chest. Well, there it is, Mr. Kent. Your quarter of a million dollars. Confederate currency. <laughs> Right. His son Adams, now acting sheriff, says he's going to go ahead and hang Farmer Perkins regardless. And then leaving it up to me whether or not you swing. Good. Good for him. He's bluffing. You think so? You know how stubborn we Cartwrights can be if we want to be? Yeah, stubborn, but not stupid. Still time to write him a note. Bring him to his senses. Why? He's doing exactly what I'd do. Then hang. Then you'll hang. Because that'd be the last straw this town would need to bring it to its senses. Tell me, Bryant, how do you think it'll feel to hang? In about 30 minutes, you're going to find out, Cartwright. Remember, that's my rope over there. 30 minutes. I'm getting out of here, Sam. Norton! 
You make another move toward that door, I'll kill you. No, you won't, Sam. You ain't got the guts to do your own killing. And don't you do it for him, McNeil. One shot, and that'll bring a crowd running in here. And you'll be the one that's gonna hang for killing me, not him. No, I stick by Sam, and he sticks by me. He's sticking by the farmer, ain't he? Well, he ain't gonna let the farmer hang, is he? I don't know, McNeil. Why don't you wait and see? And when you find out, you come and let me know. I'll be around. Hoss and Little Joe? They're outside watching things. Adam, I know what it's like to lose someone. Do you? And to know that you're the cause of it? Adam, Ben Cartwright's worth 10,000 Farmer Perkins. There's still time. Let Perkins go. Get up. Put the noose around his neck. All right, get down. Jason. Get on down the corner. You can see the jail from there. And when they turn Perkins loose, come on back here and let me know. What difference does it make? We're going to hang Cartwright anyway, ain't we? Just get down there and let me know. Okay, I just want to be in on the fun, that's all. You know, there wasn't any need to send the boy. Because. They'll hang Perkins, all right. And after they do, they'll be coming here for you. Let him come. They've been after me before. They haven't got a thing they can prove against me. They will have. After you hang me. Shut up, Cartwright. Shut up, or I'll yank this table out from under you right now. Go through with it. <laughs> What's so funny? Old Ben Cartwright. I bet he ain't so high minded with a rope around his neck. <laughs> Found him down by the corner. McNeil, one of Bryant's men. What'd you do with my pa? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> it's five o'clock. You hung him. You hung the farmer. We told you we was going to, boy. Huh? <laughs> All right. All right, you want to know where your pa is? I'll tell you where he is. 
Is that the old staple hanging on the end of a rope? You thought you'd back Sam Bryan down where you go down there and see. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, stable. <laughs> Listen to me, all of you. Look, I brought Ben Cartwright back. I didn't do nothing. Now look, I'm giving him back his gun. You done right hanging Farmer Perkins. Turn yellow. You let the farmer down. You're just like Norton said you would. You let other people do your killing for you. <laughs> Feel all right, Bob? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. It's fine. You know something? You boys look awful good to me. <laughs> me sure it's Bart. He's left poetry in the strong box before. I've labored long and hard for bread, for money and large sums, but on my corns too long you've tread. Too bad he didn't finish it. That could be argued a half a dozen different ways. Frankie didn't give him much of a chance to. I wonder what that last line is. Now we'll have to capture him to find out. As long as we can't find a man by the name of C.E. Bowles, I've got a hunch that this is our strongest clue. What do you think of that mark in the corner of the handkerchief? Chinese character. I'd say it's a laundry mark. Must be a thousand laundries in California. I don't think we'll have to take in all of California. The marked money Bart took from the strong box has been turning up here in San Francisco. There's a possibility that Bart lives right here in the city between robberies. That'll be a good job for you, Frankie. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> Well, come on, let's go. For the next three days, Frankie tramped up and down the hills of Chinatown, calling on one laundry right after another. It began to look like this would go on for weeks, that we'd have to start working on laundries outside of Chinatown when... Hello, Missy. You got laundry ticket? Is this mark yours? Oh, yes, Missy. This mark mine. Who does it belong to? One moment, please. I tell you, uh, it should belong to Mr. C.E. Bolton. C.E. Bolton. You know something, Mr. Chang? You very nice man. Me too? Sure thing, you bet. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. As soon as Frankie passed the word, I began my daily watch of Chang's California laundry. On the third day, a man answering the description of Black Bart entered the laundry. Oh, there it is. Very good. One moment, please, I get for you. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Are you Mr. C.E. Bolton? Yes, I am. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Indeed. I wonder if you'd come along with me, Mr. Bolton. We'd like to question you down at the Wells Fargo office. Well, I'm a mining engineer, you know. Would this have something to do with my latest shipment of gold? Yeah, I'm afraid so, but I doubt if it was your gold. Uh -huh. This is all very highly irregular, of course. However, I should be delighted to go along with you. Chang, this man's trying to rob me. Stop it!
you object, sir, I'll be forced to shoot. Now, let's get out of here as fast as possible. Chang wasn't a criminal. He was just helping out a friend. But it sure was mighty inconvenient at the time. turned into town and tried to get away on foot, he might have made it. As it was, he headed for open country. I guess he didn't figure on me having a horse close by. wasn't dead. He wasn't even injured. It'd take a lot more than a wagon accident to hurt a tough robber like him. <laughs> 